Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Today I've got a cool command block contraption for you. It's a way to create a speedometer out of your experience bar. So if you look at my experience bar, you'll notice when I'm not moving it's at zero. When I start moving, it goes up about halfway. If I go ahead and hold shift and start moving, you'll notice it's very low. Uh, if I sprint around, it goes up a lot higher. There's a little bit of jitter in the experience bar speedometer, but it works pretty well. And uh, it's basically made possible by the fact that Mojang fixed a bug with uh, the stat.walk1cm objective <laughs> in the most recent snapshot, but it's kind of cool to play around with actually. So if I walk around, like, like we saw before, I'll have about half of the bar filled up, and there's a little bit of jitter just because the client and the server aren't perfectly synchronized, even in single player, but it, if you just walk straight, it's pretty good. Um, and so you can kind of see the difference between different modes of moving around. So if I sprint, you'll see it gets about three quarters of the bar rather than half. So I guess sprinting is about 50% faster. Uh, I don't actually know the numbers, so I think that's probably true, but I don't know for sure. Uh, holding shift is very slow. Uh, one cool thing is, I've known this for a while, I don't know how commonly known this is, but if you actually hold both forward and strafe to the left or the right as your uh, as your sneaking, you know, shifting, whatever, you actually go quite a bit faster. So I have about two and a half bars of my experience bar filled up. Now if I press both uh, D and W, you can see it's about three and a half and sometimes it'll jump up a little bit too. So you actually go quite a bit faster. I think it's about a little bit less than 50% faster by um, holding both forward and to the right or forward and to the left while you're holding shift. So that's something cool that you can see very easily with a speedometer. Uh, if I go ahead and drink this potion of swiftness, and I start running around, you'll see, even without sprinting, um, obviously my speedometer is showing a little higher. If I do sprint, it goes up almost full. Uh, I've got a potion of swiftness, um, this one speed two. Right now I have speed one. Uh, speed two, so let's do this one. Uh, obviously it's gonna be even faster, and if I go ahead and sprint, sometimes the experience bar will even wrap over to level five, so. <laughs> And you'll hear the sound that it's associated with leveling up. Um, so kind of speed two is the limit of what the speedometer will accurately read out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the commands that I'm using here to accomplish this effect. This is all the redstone, there's not much to it. And it's pretty simple how it works, but it does take advantage of some cool aspects of the way redstone is ordered, or the way command blocks are ordered. First of all, uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear my effects because those particles are annoying. <laughs> uh, okay, so the clock here is what runs the whole thing. Um, this is just two repeaters pointing at each other and they form a little clock. So the first thing that happens is we fill up an area with redstone blocks and then after uh, two game ticks or one redstone tick, uh, we fill up that same area with wool. So we can see that going on here. It's filling up with redstone blocks then filling up with red wool. And so this is what's triggering all of these command blocks. And these command blocks are what, the, are what make the, the speedometer go. So the cool thing about this is we can actually determine the order in which the command blocks are going to happen. And if I press F3, you'll see right now I'm looking in the positive X direction. And then if I look this way, I'm looking at the positive Z direction. So when you or organize um, redstone blocks like this and have an area filled up, turns out that the way that the game runs the commands is always the same and basically it'll start at the lowest x and z value and first it'll go count up in the x positive x direction so it's going to run all of these first and then it'll go to the next uh, row in the z which is this is the second row in the z coordinates and it'll run all these command blocks and then it'll go to the next row and uh, and it'll run all these command blocks so this one is the last command block that gets run so i take advantage of that with this contraption um, because uh, if you'll notice, if I go to game mode zero, you never see my experience bar lower than level four. I have this this number four always present, and my experience bar is always at the level four at the minimum. And the way I achieve this is by basically every time this clock runs and we get all these redstone blocks to fill up the area, first we take away 100 levels, which basically just sets the player's level down to zero, and then we add four levels. And these happen in the exact same tick. Uh, the player doesn't have a chance to see their experience bar drop down to zero before it gets set back up to four. So 
and then all of these command blocks run in the same tick as well. So uh, first we add one experience point if the player's walked score is at least 20. And um, so basically the way I created uh, the walked scoreboard is I, I, I ran this command walked and then it's stat dot um, walk one cm. So this is exactly how I created that objective that you see on the right hand side. And as I walk around, you can see that objective ticking up on its own. The game tracks it on its own. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, so, so this command block is saying, well, if the player's walked at least 20 centimeters, I think it actually tracks uh, decimeters, which is a tenth of a meter. Uh, then we add one experience points. And then if the players walked at least 40 uh, uh, decimeters, then we wa then we give them another experience point, and then 60, and then 80, etc. So basically there's a bunch of command blocks that are adding one experience point, um, but only if the players walked a certain amount of distance since the last time this thing was checked. And then the last command block here just sets the walked score back down to zero. So that's what keeps resetting it to zero. So that when I uh, when I go to game, well, I, don't, I guess I don't have to be in game mode zero, but you can see the walk score is constantly getting reset to zero. Um, and, that's, and that's what's doing that. So that each time this thing runs, it's got a fresh count of the last, uh, of the last amount of time walked since this whole, uh, this whole circuit ran previously. So it basically, you know, as you're walking, it ticks up, and then your score, your experience gets at zero, then to four, then you get little bits of experience added, and that's what fills up the speedometer. And then it sets your walk score back to zero, so that it'll count up again from zero, and so that the next time this thing runs, uh, you'll have a fresh walked score, which should accurately reflect how far you've walked in the last, um, I think, four tenths of a second. Because that's how that's how long that's how often this clock runs. But it's a really cool effect and works very well. And I think you should be able to replace every instance of at p with at a, and this should work uh, for multiple players in a server too. So kind of cool. And you could you could use this even if you wanted to um, you know do different effects if the player is walking at different speeds and stuff like that. So I think it's a really cool capability. And it's thanks to Mojang for fixing a bug with walk one CM, which was making it not count your speed correctly before. So this is pretty cool. Uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching.